It's been a few days since SpaceX's spectacular USS F-67 Falcon Heavy rocket launch, but the echoes of that launch are still covered through newspapers, websites, and forums around the world. That's because just under five years after the February 2018 debut, there's still never been a Falcon Heavy launch, Jellyfish, or Nebula. That thankfully changed on Sunday. Indeed, from start to finish, Sunday's Falcon Heavy launch delivered spectacular moments, unlike the others. Let's find out everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech. First and foremost, USSF-67 is an incredible success mission. On January 15th, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket lifted off for the second time in 75 days to launch another batch of U.S. military payload into orbit tens of thousands of kilometers above Earth's surface. Six and a half hours later, the U.S. Space Systems Command, SSC, confirmed that Falcon Heavy had again completed the exceptionally difficult launch without issue. To deliver the USS F-67 mission payloads directly to the geosynchronous orbit, GSO, the giant SpaceX rocket had to sacrifice one of its potentially reusable boosters and complete a six-hour ballet of rolls, burns, and spacecraft deployments. And for the second time in a row, Falcon Heavy did so without apparent issue. In an SSC press release, Major General Stephen Purdy, Program Executive Officer for Assured Access to Space, said that the group had another fantastic launch today on Falcon Heavy. He added that while the launch itself was impressive, he was most proud of the fact that we placed an important national capability into space. And an impressive launch, it certainly was. USS F-67 was Falcon Heavy's first twilight launch. The extraordinary cadence of SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket, which Falcon Heavy is derived from, caused twilight launches and the incredible light shows they can produce to become a fairly routine phenomenon. And finally, after five years, it happened in this picture. The rocket lifted off just 10 or so minutes after sunset and soared into the fading purple skies. Those skies were still relatively bright at ground level, reducing the amount of contrast, but the resulting light show was still spectacular as Falcon Heavy and its immense exhaust plume ascended back into the sunlight. The artificial sunrise that lit up the pillar-like plume with the colors of sunrise and eventually bright daylight. Close-up views enabled by tracking telescopes captured the true drama, which began shortly after Falcon Heavy's twin side boosters separated from the rocket's main core stage and upper stage, flipped around, and ignited the engines to fly back to the Florida coast they'd just lifted off from. As the nine-engine center core continued towards space, each booster fired up one and then three Merlin 1D engines for their boost-back burns. In this image, the center core can be seen burning toward orbit with the USS F-67 payload. In the meantime, the side boosters are firing to begin the return to Earth. This maneuvering is complicated during a Falcon Heavy by interactions with a center core plume. During a Falcon 9 launch, of course, there would be just a single Merlin vacuum engine powering the second stage at that time. After slowing down for the return to Earth, the side boosters perform a near-continuous series of cold gas thruster firings. These nitrogen-powered thrusters help keep the rockets in proper orientation as they descend toward the planet, and they survive re-entry through Earth's atmosphere. Now, the second most powerful rocket in the world after NASA's Space Launch System, the Falcon Heavy always puts on a great show with its 27 Merlin engines firing at once. It holds the record for the rocket with the most first stage engines to reach orbit, at least it will until SpaceX's Starship rocket flies later this year. If you missed this launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket, don't despair. For Falcon Heavy side boosters B-1064 and 1065, both of which supporting USS F-44 and USS F-67, their missions are far from over. Their second successful side-by-side -side landing has cleared the boosters to be reused on a third military launch called USS F-52. Originally known as AFSPC-52, the mission was Falcon Heavy's first operational U.S. military launch contract and the first time the rocket beat competitor United Launch Alliance ULA during a competitive procurement. USS F-52 is scheduled to launch no earlier than April 10, 2023, less than three months from now. 
Once that mission is complete, Falcon Heavy will have no more U.S. military missions on contract, although more will almost certainly be rewarded sooner than later. USS F-52 is sandwiched between two other Falcon Heavy launches. Falcon Heavy could launch the Viasat-3 communication satellite as early as March 2023, and the Jupiter-3 Echo Star-24 communication satellite as early as May 2023, and that makes for a busy 90 days. NASA's robotic Psyche Asteroid Explorer is slated to depart Earth on Falcon Heavy rockets during a launch period opening October 10th. A Psyche mission, delayed from 2022, will enter orbit around the metal-rich asteroid Psyche in 2029. SpaceX has a backload of 12 Falcon Heavy missions over the next few years, including the five launches planned in 2023. The rocket, boasting three reusable boosters, is the second most powerful operating launch vehicle in the world after Boeing's Space Launch System debuted last year, but it cost about 10 times less. Falcon Heavy USS F-67 sent the most important satellites used by the U.S. military to coordinate its forces around the globe live in high orbit some 27,000 miles above the Earth. It's difficult to get there by design that keeps the satellites safe from attacks from the ground. And right now, only SpaceX's Falcon Heavy can deliver those big satellites to geostationary orbits. The SLS is way too expensive. Boeing retired the Delta IV rocket that used to do the job, and the United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket still has yet to fly, though it's expected to do so later this year. For the foreseeable future, then, the U.S. military is dependent on SpaceX for heavy lifts, and SpaceX is taking advantage. While its first Falcon Heavy launch for the U.S. military in 2019 cost just $130 billion, this mission is a cost of $316 million. Inflation and the complexity of the mission are part of the reason for the increase, but the other part is simply what a one provider market can bear. Now SpaceX is seeking $750 million in new capital at a reported valuation of $137 billion. That comes after Elon Musk's space conglomerate took in $250 million from investors in 2022 and $1.5 billion in 2021. SpaceX is almost like a sovereign entity in their ability to raise capital endlessly, says Chris Quilty, a space industry expert. The reason wouldn't surprise Peter Thiel, the SpaceX investor and Musk collaborator, who's argued that the best business model is a monopoly. SpaceX dominates most sectors it plays in, but in a few, human spaceflight and launching large satellites, it's the only game in town. Investors are handing Musk their money to fund ambitious projects like Starlink, the company's satellite network, and Starship, its next rocket. More on that later. But one reason they feel they can secure betting on those frontier technologies is how reliant the U.S. government is on SpaceX. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section down below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.